All right, Gen 4 and Gen 5 guys, I've heard y'all. Y'all want a burnout tune, but there's something that we got to talk about beforehand. Um, there's actually a big feature in the ECU from basically 99 newer. Um, that's probably one of the reasons why you're down on power, down on fuel mileage, and probably can't even do a burnout. Interested now? Let's talk about that. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a visual representation of this. Um, we're going to open up a stock tune file too. We're just going to do the 2013 Silverado 5.3 that we used in the initial Gen 4 Truck Norris video. Um, so we're going to double click that. All right, so GM's GM has a way of learning Octane. Ford does it, Dodge does it, Nissan does it, Toyota does it. Most manufacturers can learn your Octane. Now, how do they do that? So Ford calls it borderline knock. And what that means is they have a they have two different ignition timing tables. They have what they call MBT timing, um, which is max brake torque, and then they have their borderline knock table. So, borderline knock table, um, you're going to be cruising down the road at this pre-programmed ignition timing. You've got some good fuel, or you're at elevation where you're not going to detonate as much. Um, so, knock sensors aren't going off. You're going to you're pulling hills. Knock sensors are happy. The truck can actually add timing to it. Now that's on the Fords. So GM does it a little bit different way. GM actually has two different tables. They call it high octane and low octane tables. Um, so I'm going to pull these up and let's show you. So we're going to go to engine. We're going to go to spark. We're going to go to advance. And you're going to see these two tables over here. It's high octane and low octane. Again, this is the same. Technically, it goes all the way back as far as HP Tuner supports that I've seen. Um, they had these ta these tables like this, but anyway, so you basically have your high octane is your maximum amount of timing that you can run, and low octane is the lowest amount of timing that the vehicle wants to run on, and so we have knock learn or knock learn factors, what they're going to call it in the data log, and I can show you that on another day. Um, but basically, your vehicle can learn as basically you have a, a modifier that can go anywhere from low octane to high octane. It can be anywhere in between. Um, so we'll, just, we'll let's click high octane. Now there's other there's other timing modifiers in here. I'm just going to show you these base tables that we can get an, a, a better idea as to what I'm talking about. So let me let me scoot this thing over. All right, so we're going to move this over here. This high octane over here. I'm going to put low octane over here. Actually, let's do this. I'm struggling. And that GTO earlier, between the GTO and that and that green truck with the with the aftermarket throttle bodies on there, my brain is fried today. Anyways, all right. So both tables are up. So what we're gonna do is let's check out the 3200 RPM range. So here's 3200 RPM. This is the low octane. Low octane's on the left. Um, so let's look at uh, 0.72 uh, of cylinder air mass. Now this axis right here, this is a whole another video. I've got to explain this to you. It's it's somewhat in depth. I can simplify it. I seem to be pretty decent at simplifying things. But anyways, just understand that the higher this number is, um, the more airflow we're moving, the harder you are on the pedal. Now. Depending on engine cubic inch, it's going to depend on where we fall right here. But we'll say we're in a 5.3. Is you know DA is decent that day, so we're going to be at 0 0.72 grams of cylinder air mass. So we're going to follow this over, and you're going to see low octane table 3200 RPM. We're at nine and a half degrees of ignition timing. So these these values right here, this is actual ignition timing. Now again, there are some modifiers that we can have, but this is essentially the base. So 3200 0.72 grams. We're at nine and a half degrees on high octane. 0.72 grams, 3,200, so 0.72, 3,200, 22.5 degrees. So you're talking there is a what 13 degree difference between these two tables. And that's there because your ECU is using its knock sensors to where it wants to hear knock, detonation, and it wants to pull timing to be able to get rid of that noise. So why is it a big deal for burnouts on Gen 4 and Gen 5 guys? Well, it's because of the motor mount. And this may mess with some guys. I know a lot of guys know this, but 07 to 13, especially, and the Gen 5 trucks are starting to get this way, your driver's side motor mount, if you've never replaced it and you've got over, say, 80,000 miles in your truck, your driver's side motor mount, there's a 99.9% .9 chance it's bad. Um, so when it, when it goes bad, 
obviously the engine raises up causes things to hit if you got long tubes it's going to cause a long tube to hit the, uh, the frame um, but most of the time they'll get broken enough where there is actually when the rubber breaks you've got steel and steel and there's actually like a, almost like a safety and so when the engine comes slams up it, they'll sit there and they'll bang on each other and when they do obviously it knocks so the ECU hears that through the knock sensor and it thinks oh shit like we need to pull some timing out of this thing. Let's control this detonation. Obviously, it can't get rid of that knock by pulling timing. So you'll say your truck, you know, you're running 87, 89 octane, maybe 93, cruising around, knock sensors are happy. You're over here at this 22 and a half degrees, right? And the motor mount breaks. All of a sudden, it's going to think it just got a bad batch of gas. Maybe it picked up water. Maybe it did something. So it's going to it's going to get down to this table over here, this nine and a half degrees, as fast as humanly possible. Um, so when it does that, it doesn't have to stop there. So we've got these two tables, motor mount went bad, truck just pulled out 13 degrees of timing. In a truck, you're talking 60, 70, 80 horsepower, maybe more than that. But there's more. So then not only does it have the ability of pulling out that 13 degrees off those tables, but if we go right here to knock sensors, or sorry, retard, maximum knock retard, it can pull an additional 10 degrees right here. So you're talking, all right, we've went from 22 and a half to nine and a half, and now we're down to, I mean, negative numbers, right? And so once it gets down here, this actually will cause a code that a lot of guys, you, you, I mean, if you're watching this video, you may have even had to Google this code before. If your truck has ever thrown a knock sensor code in 07 to 13 trucks, and you replaced knock sensors, or you did whatever you could, and you could not get rid of it, chances are it's a bad motor mount. What happens is the ECU will pull that additional 10 degrees out, so we're down to negative half a degree. Still knocking, still making noise. ECU freaks out, thinks something's wrong, so it throws a knock system error code. Once that pops up, everybody gets upset. They think, oh, we'll put better gas in it or we'll replace the knock sensors. You're not fixing it. Only way to fix it is to replace that motor mount. So say it breaks at 100,000 miles, if you run up to 150, 160,000 miles, you may need a passenger side mount too. That constant stress, that constant torque will eventually tear that passenger side mount. Um, so, also with that being said, this comes down to your programmers that give you the 87 tune and a 93 tune. It's 100% bullshit. Um, the majority of those programmers that I've had on the dyno, if you data log them, um, they'll actually have the ECU pinned down on like the low octane setting for 87 octane and then so it basically brings your truck down to it dumps it down from factory takes away power from factory so that way when you put in that 93 tune all of a sudden you get that big bump of power and it feels oh man this thing is it's hauling ass now nope it's just giving you back what you had from the factory so there's no reason to have a 93 tune or 87 tune or any of that in these trucks just as long as you as a tuner or hopefully your tuner does this but as long as y'all leave this strategy able to work um, especially in the stock trucks if as long as it's able to work man this thing it's it's a such a wonderful system I mean you're talking about a truck that you can tow on 87 octane or you can run unloaded on 93 octane at the drag strip and there's a 45 50 60 horsepower difference between the two and you didn't even know that you know a lot of guys you'll see them talking about on Facebook pages uh, just just run 87 93 doesn't help it actually does you get a good truck like me as a tuner Cruising on the dyno, if I get a good truck that somebody's put 93 in for the last couple tanks, that truck's going to make big power. So that also brings me to the next thing as to guys are always asking about, you know, horsepower in factory tunes. A bunch of tuners will post this. You know, they'll you'll see them, just put this truck in, did an 87 tune, I picked up 40 horsepower. Nope, it's bullshit too. Here's why. As a tuner, go to back the truck up on the dyno. You want to do a before and after, but... For whatever reason, you think, let's pull the file of this thing first. So in the earlier days of tuning, you think this is harm harmless. Like you just want to pull the file out. You're not going to modify it. You're just going to pull it out. What does that do? That resets the knock, lock, uh, knock learn factor. Pulls you back to that low octane table. Usually after one or two pulls, even if you don't touch the ECU at all, even if you just pull the file out of it, do one or two pulls, truck will pick up that 30 or 40 horsepower back. There's not 30 or 40 horsepower left in the factory tune people. I know your tuners want you to believe that because they're trying to sell you on this. So when I'm doing a street tune for guys, I'm worried about throttle response. I'm worried about turning off DOD and I'm worried about getting the transmission shifting like it's supposed to. You know, guys are like, how much power are you adding? I'm not. 
ignition timing stock. Like it, it's that's how it needs to be. Your truck's gonna run as good as the fuel that you put in it, and you have to understand that. So, anyways, kind of a long-winded video, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of how this timing system works. And again, this works on the LT based Gen 5 stuff too. Um, they're the exact same way. DI stuff is a lot more sensitive to octane. Um, DI trucks, if you go from 87 to 93, you're talking, I mean, it picks up some serious good horsepower. Uh, that's another reason why DI is big on E85. Throwing that extra octane, you get those things up, you know, DI truck, say a cam DI truck running, you know, you can get them 28, 29 degrees of timing up top. Now, up top. But you can get them up there, and they love it. I mean, they absolutely love it. So anyways, guys, I wanted to explain this stuff to you. Um, again, this needed to this video needed to come out before the burnout tunes for Gen 4 and Gen 5. If you want to do a good burnout, first off, let's check the driver's side motor mount. And if you need to know how, the best thing to do, um, pop the hood. Because usually, you know, you, there's that gap that you can see between the, the wiper cowl and the, and the bottom of the hood when the, when the hood's up. Pop the hood, get back in the truck, uh, put it in drive. Um, act like you're about to do a brake stand. Don't break the tires loose. I mean, well, I mean, you can if you want to. I probably would anyways if it was my truck. But anyways, brake torque it up. You'll see the engine snap up. Um, if it jumps up anymore, I mean, you'll see a good mount. It may just slightly flex. Um, you can tell as the mount gets worse, but it'll get to a point where they'll just clunk. And then you'll finally, I mean, you may have heard that clunk on the on your floorboard that you didn't know what it was. Maybe you thought it was a U-joint or a, a you know, bad leaf spring bushing or something. It was a motor mount the whole time. Anyways, guys. That's the knock, uh, knock learn factor um, and high octane, low octane explanation on these trucks. Um, I'll go in depth more when it comes to tuning, ignition, timing, and stuff like that. But for right now, if you're going to try to tune on your truck, don't touch timing. Put good gas in it. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Y'all have a good night.